So in this video, I'll be showing you how I use a Dremel or a flex shaft to polish my jewelry and do some finishing work from basically just being a rough piece to a nice and shiny piece. Just as a small disclaimer, the ring in this video is just to show you the techniques and how to use the different tools on metals. It's not going to be perfect by any means, and you're going to see some little scratches or little um, gouges inside of it, which you can get rid of all these if you take more time on the piece, and if you're planning on selling yours, or if you're making it for someone, or if you're making it for yourself and you want it to be perfect, you just need to take a little bit more time and go over everything. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using this ring. So if you notice any little flaws or problems, I'm aware that they're there and I know that I'm not going to make it perfect in this video. So now that I have that out of the way, we can get started. So here's everything I use to polish my work. And this is the ring I'm going to show you how to clean up and polish using these tools. And if you're interested in buying any of these tools, I'll have links to all of them in the description below. So one of the most important bits for polishing are actually the polishing pads. So these white ones are felt polishing pads that come in different sizes and shapes. And then the yellow one I have is made from fabric. But no matter what polishing pads you're using, you're going to need a polishing compound. This particular compound is called Fabuluster. It works really well at taking out fine scratches and it also brings up a mirror finish really quickly and works on just about any metals that I work with, along with some stones, resins, and plastics. I also like to use these bristled sanding discs. They make cleaning up your piece extremely fast and easy, and they also remove solder really quickly in hard to get to places. And as you can see with the numbers on the top, they come in different grits, and they even go higher than a thousand. I've seen them all the way up to 3000 grit. And this is a set of silicone rubber polishing wheels. And these also help with the interior of the ring since you can't fit the other sanding discs inside of them and will help remove any burrs or any type of solder buildup or extra solder that you might have around your solder joint. So these are just some different abrasive wheels that you can use that come in four different grits and they don't go quite as high or quite as low as the other discs that I showed you but they still come in really handy and you can get a wider polish area with one of these versus using one of the other discs. So this is a wooden ring clamp and it's extremely helpful for holding a ring in place while you're buffing it, especially if you don't have anything to protect your fingers from the heat or the actual abrasive tool that you're using. This will actually save your hands a lot. You can really use either side of this to hold your ring and it has little pieces of leather on it so you can keep your piece from getting scratched. So once you have your ring in this, you you just need to put this little wedge of wood into it and then push it down onto the table to make sure that everything's going to be locked in place. As you can see, this is a very simple but very helpful tool. Another very handy tool that will help protect your fingers are these silicone finger guards. They're heat resistant, so you'll be able to touch your piece without burning your fingers, and you'll also be able to wear these to protect your fingers from any of your buffing pads or polishing wheels or anything like that coming in contact with your skin so you'll lessen your chances of actually cutting your fingers. They come in a pack with a variety of different sizes and you only really need to use three on your hand because your other two fingers usually aren't used to grip your piece and usually aren't in the way but you can use them on every finger if you want. And whenever you're polishing, make sure that you have a dust mask and some eye protection because you do not want to get this in your lungs or in your eyes. So you can use either a Dremel or a Flex Shaft to do this, but I prefer to use the Flex Shaft over the Dremel just because it has more control and the foot controls work way better with it. You can use this foot control with a Dremel setup, but it doesn't have anywhere near the accuracy or the control amounts. You could literally just barely spin this if you wanted to, or go to max speed and anywhere between. And with the Dremel, you really can't. There's only like a couple different areas where it actually picks up and will start going at. So to start off, I'm going to clean up the inside of the ring using one of the silicone wheels and one of the mandrels that it came with. You can get these in all different shapes, sizes, and grits, and you're going to have to look around for what ones you actually need for what you're going to be working on. I mostly just use these to clean up surfaces, like the inside of rings, to remove any type of solder or any burrs that were left from when I cut the ring out. 
So like right here on the solder joint, I'm going to use this to take off any excess solder and try to blend it in as much as possible. So when using things like this or any of the other polishing bits I'm going to be showing, make sure that you're constantly moving and not staying in one spot for too long. This will actually start to dig into the material and leave little ruts or little indents that you won't really be able to get out. So just keep that in mind when doing this. And I really suggest practicing on a piece of metal that you don't really care about first, just to get a feel for everything so you know what to expect when you actually touch it to the metal and how long you can keep it in certain areas without actually digging into it and messing up your piece. So once the entire inside of the ring is uniform and I've blended the solder joint as much as possible, I'm going to move on to the outside of the ring. So now that I'm working on the outside of the ring, I'm going to be using my bristled sanding discs. And I'm going to start with the 80 grit and just go over everything and clean it up, take any burrs off, making sure that everything's all nice and smooth. I'm also going to blend in the solder joint on the outside as much as possible. So once I've got that done, I'm going to move up in grit to 120 grit, and I'm going to be using one of the bigger, kind of fluffier looking sanding wheels that I have. So I've only worked on half of the outer ring with this next grit to show the difference in the scratches that they're leaving. So the goal is to leave finer and finer scratches until you start to actually polish. And then when you are polishing it, you'll have such fine scratches that it just looks like a mere finish. I also need to finish up the inside of the ring because I wasn't able to get to a lot of it due to it being in the clamp and only being able to get to certain parts. So I'm gonna have to go over that again and just clean it up and make it more uniform than it was before. And once I have that all done, and to my liking, I'm going to switch back to one of the bristle sanding discs. And this is a 400 grit. So once you have this to your liking, you can either move up to the next grits and keep working your way all the way up to 3000 grit or 2000 grit. But I'm going to stop here and start with my polishing. So there also are different grits in polishing compounds, and you can get a coarser one so you don't have to go through all the sanding processes, or at least as many of them, and then you can switch your polishing compounds, and you also need to switch your polishing discs. You don't want to mix compounds because you won't get the right grits anymore. But I'm just going to be using the one grit of polishing compound for this. So to start, I'm going to polish up the outside of the ring using a felt pad. But before I start polishing or anything like that, I'm going to put on my silicone finger guards because this ring is going to get extremely hot and these are actually heat resistant and will keep the heat away from your fingers for a decent amount of time so you'll be able to move the ring around and not really have any problems. If the ring does get too hot or your fingers are just too hot, just let everything cool down and take your time with it. So this is the polishing compound that I use, and to make it work with your polishing pad, you have to load it up onto it. And basically all you need to do is get your rotary tool going with your polishing pad in it, touch it to this so it loads up onto the outside of your polishing pad, and that's all you need to do. You will have to add more every so often as you're polishing your piece, and you'll kind of see when you need to because it won't be polishing anymore and nothing will be changing really, and you'll just need to re-up on how much polishing compound you have on your polishing pad. So once I have this all done, I use about medium pressure over the entire piece and just keep going over it back and forth, not staying in one spot too long. And you can actually see the piece start to bring out a mirrored or at least shinier finish. You might also notice that the pad is actually starting to turn black, which is completely normal when you're polishing with this compound and others. And like I said before, every so often you're going to want to go back and get more polishing compound and you can get too much and it'll just basically leave black 
compound or whatever color compound you're using all over your piece and you're going to need to either get it off of your polishing pad or just switch out the polishing pad for another one. So if you are using this on something that has say an inlay that you used CA glue or a resin, make sure not to stay in one spot for too long because you can actually start burning the resin or plastic or the adhesive and you'll leave burn marks and they don't really come out and you can ruin your entire piece doing this. Also, if you have any soft stones in your piece, make sure you do all your polishing work for the most part before putting the stone in because you can actually damage your stone if you have a soft enough stone and your abrasive or your grit is too high, you'll start to damage the stone. So this is what it looks like if you overload how much polishing compound you have on your polishing wheel. So how I fix this problem is I use a piece of wood and just run the polishing wheel on the wood to remove polishing compound and then test it on the piece again and see if it's enough and if not rub it on the wood again and go back and it usually fixes my problem pretty quickly. You can also just switch out the polishing pad real quick and continue with what you're doing. That is if it's just too much on there and it's not going away whatsoever. Or if you don't want to deal with this, just switch it out real quick and you'll be good to go. But as you can see, I was able to fix my problem reasonably quickly and get back to polishing my piece. So once I've used the felt polishing pads and got this piece to about where I want it to, I'm going to bring up the shine a bit and get a more mirrored finish using a yellow cotton polishing pad. And this is basically just layers of cotton fabric that you use to polish the piece. And you'll be able to see the really big difference once I start going over this. And again, this is using the same exact polishing compound. So another polishing compound you can use for finishing like this is Red Rouge. But just be very aware that if you don't have a polishing box that actually sucks out all the um, dust and everything from it, everything in your area or work area is going to get a fine misting of red on it. And it's almost impossible to get off of everything. I still have stuff that I've washed a couple times now that is just caked on red. So keep that in mind, especially if you're working inside, that it can stain everything around you if you don't have proper ventilation for it or a box to use it in. So yeah, as you can probably tell, polishing with the rotary tools like this takes a little bit of time and you have to go over a lot of the area using just a small disc. If you invest in a actual motorized polishing wheel, this goes a lot faster and it's a lot easier too, but then that's another tool you have to buy. So I do suggest just playing with this method first and learning how everything works and what finishes you get on what metals using what compounds. And then you could invest in the actual buffing machine. And I'll leave a link in the description to a pretty inexpensive one that works really well and lasted me four years now with no problems. So like I said in the beginning, this isn't going to be perfect by any means, but you should have the gist of how to start polishing pieces and getting them to a nice mirrored finish. So I'm just going to finish up a couple spots on the outside of this and then get it ready for actually cleaning it up and getting any polish residue off of it. And then I'm going to spray a lacquer on this because it's copper and it'll start to tarnish in about two hours if I don't do anything with it. So as you can see by my hand and how dirty it is, along with how dirty the table is, this is why you need to be wearing a respirator when doing this and some safety glasses. So this doesn't get in your lungs or in your eyes. And it doesn't have to be a respirator, it could also just be a dust mask like I showed. Just make sure it's pretty tight on your face. So I'm going to be using this ultrasonic cleaner to clean off any of the residue left over from the polishing compound on the ring. As you might have noticed, the door on this is broken, and I probably should be getting a new or better one of these sometime in the future. 
But if you do not have one of these, you don't absolutely need one. It just makes everything a lot easier and faster. So just add a little bit of dish soap to your piece and use a soft bristled toothbrush to clean off any of the polish that you can from the outside or inside of your piece or even in little areas that you can actually get the brush into. And use hot water when doing this, as hot as you can stand with your hands, because it will make it easier for the polish to come off the hotter it is. So this method can be used to clean your entire piece off and you won't even have to use the sonic cleaner, but I do this before putting it into the sonic cleaner to break anything loose that might just be kind of stuck in there or on there. So once I've gotten the majority of the polishing compound off, I'm going to submerge it into the ultrasonic cleaner and have it do the rest of the work for me. Also, if your piece happens to have a stone in it, make sure to check and see if it can actually go into the ultrasonic cleaner without damaging the stone. Because certain stones will actually start to crack if you put them in there. So go ahead and look up the stone before putting it in there, if you have a stone. So here's the ring once it came out of the cleaner. As you can see, it needs a little bit more polishing, but I'm going to move on to the next step because this is just to show you the processes I go through to get a polished ring. And I'm going to also show you how I seal this ring because of the fact that it's copper. <laughs> So this is a spray bottle of rubbing alcohol that I'm going to spray onto the ring and wipe it off to make sure that all the oils or any residue is completely gone from this because when I go to seal this and if there's any oils, it will leave little fish eyes which are little holes in it and it won't seal properly. So to seal this piece, or any other pieces, I would just hang it from a thin piece of copper wire and then spray it with my sealer. I have a full video on this and I'll have a link in the description and a link in the card above this video showing you in more detail what I do and what product I actually use to do this with. But basically all I do is just spray this piece very lightly and then once it dries, turn it and then spray it again and I'll do about six coats a total to make sure that there's absolutely no way that this is going to wear out anytime soon. Well, that's about it for this video. If you found it helpful and learned something from it, feel free to leave a like. If you happen to have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to be updated whenever I upload a new video, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I try to get out new videos every week. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.